Hey folks, welcome back to a new episode of Hyrule's Ghost Towns, a wee series where I explore the forgotten ruins of Hyrule's past, investigating how they might have fallen, what life was like back in their day, if they have a future, and any stories hidden in the remains. The latest version of the kingdom seen across Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is in a post-apocalyptic state, and whilst on the road to recovery, hundreds of ruins from the past still stand, the forgotten ghost towns of Hyrule. Let's have a look at some more. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos, then be sure to check out the Hyrule's Ghost Towns playlist. Be sure to go and grab yourself a snack and drink, folks. Subscribe to the channel if you're new for more fabulous weekly Zelda content coming your way. And let's go explore some of Hyrule's forgotten, mysterious, and unexplained ghost towns. The widespread nature paradise of the Akala region has always been a special location, covered in beautiful reds and yellows, packed with animals and stunning sights all over. It is one of the least populated regions of the kingdom, and always has been. Prior to the construction of Terrytown and Breath of the Wild, all we found was the Akala Tech Lab and Akala Stable. Aside from them, it was pure nature. However, this wasn't always the case. In the north of Akala, across the Tumla Heights area, across from the tech lab, we can find multiple ruined buildings. But rather than collectively in one compact space like your typical village, these buildings are spread up and down the hill individually, a scattered village. This is a Kala core. Even when there was some sort of settlement, the core was still nature. But how exactly did it fall? The Great Calamity didn't hit Akala heavily, mainly reaching the Citadel, but not much further. Whilst we do find monsters on the hill in the current day, and a guardian on the other hill back in Breath of the Wild, these homes are so tucked away into their own little tight-knit area that I just don't personally see that being the reason for their downfall. Rather, I think it was down to neglect. Most likely an effect of the Great Calamity, with the intense population decline as well as people being more thinly spread across the kingdom. These homes may have just been abandoned, and later overrun by monsters. It's important to remember that this is speculative theorising. It's not certain that this is how it happened, just what I feel is most likely. It's entirely possible that this did happen directly through the Great Calamity. It's entirely possible it fell 50 years after. So what was life like for those that lived here? It'd have been quite different to the life of those in central Hyrule and the more popular regions of the kingdom. I could see those that lived here being foragers, hunters, and people who lived off the resources of the land. Lots of something I love, fishing. A rather disconnected life to those in central Hyrule. I see it kind of similar to my country, Scotland, and the difference between living in the central belt such as myself, and those living up north in the highlands. Living here sounds like a bit of a dream, beautiful nature all around you, the salty shores of Akala not too far, and all whilst living off your surroundings. It sounds quite nice indeed. As for a future anytime soon, I just don't see it happening unfortunately. The population is still low, Terrytown has been built and is now the main settlement of the already quiet region, but maybe that's for the best, as Akala is the nature region. So I think these ruins are just going to stand in ruin. In the last Ghost Towns video, we took a look at some outpost ruins, and whilst I try to avoid them as they're fairly common and the same, when I discover a more unique one, it does intrigue me, and that's exactly what can be found on the lower ends of Death Mountain on the western side, just across from Typhlo Ruins, and we find a massive black Hinox laying within the ruins. But oddly, there aren't many remains to be seen, but what is here is clearly that of the Hylian outpost architecture. This specific stone design, as well as the crest carved into the rock confirms so. Perhaps it was a smaller outpost much like the previously looked at remains found just outside Hateno village, or maybe these were a lot larger but were demolished. Not by the Hudson Construction Company or Unobo Company, but rather the beast we find resting here. The gigantic 
Gigantic Hinox are absolute units and very capable of destruction. A slight flaw in that idea, however, is that we don't find this Hinox here in Breath of the Wild. But hey, Maybe it was just on a stroll. Life here was likely rather quiet, to be honest. The Hylian Knights that would have worked and operated here likely had rather chill days with not much going on as the outpost is very remote. So why even bother having one here? Well, I personally believe that rather than just watching over this little area at the bottom of the mountain, that perhaps this outpost ran a lot of patrols. Knights walking around the wider area around the back of Death Mountain, and on the other side of Typho Ruin. Whilst a quiet area, it's quite large, and if anyone was to become stranded or in trouble out here in these areas, they'd never be found if nobody was checking. I believe that to be the case with this former outpost. We can also find the remains of a wooden building a little further down from the outpost perhaps a storage building or something, but I personally doubt this was a lone home here. The placement just feels a bit off. But hey, what do I know? There's also a chance that those that lived and worked here specialised in research, and were also monitoring the ruins just across the bog, as well as being knights. But that's a shot in the dark. As for the future of this almost unrecognisable settlement, it's non-existent. It's a ghost town. There's sadly just no reason for this outpost to be repaired. The population is still significantly less than pre-calamity times, and using resources to repair such a remote and out of the way outpost like this just wouldn't make any logical sense. Plus, our friend here has made it his home. Let him sleep. On the edges of central Hyrule, in the site of the famous Colosseum in Great Plateau, we can find the Outskirt Hill Ruins. A surprisingly big former settlement for the location. The Outskirt Hill is found by, funny enough, the Outskirt Stable. It stands tall, meeting the walls of the Great Plateau in height, and is a nice wee spot. In Tears of the Kingdom, one of the great fairies has moved to the hill just a little down from the ruins. We find a good few buildings up here, mostly all nothing more than burnt and broken frames now, with the ground beneath also burnt to ash, as well as a shelter and horse carriage just down from the buildings. Whatever happened here involved fire. However, there are no signs of a fire starter, in Tears of the Kingdom anyway. In the previous game Breath of the Wild, however, we can find a joyful flame whiz robe skipping around these ruins, the culprit of this destruction. The thing that isn't clear, however, is if this happened during the Great Calamity, or Age of Burning Fields shortly after, or if this happened a while after the horrific attack on the kingdom. Regardless, the creator of destruction decided to hang around for a wee while, but a few more years down the line come Tears of the Kingdom, and it's gone. However this went down must have been terrifying for those home. Whiz robes are ruthless and appear very happy whilst doing so, spitting balls of flame everywhere, setting ablaze to innocent Hylian homes, burning them to the ground. It would have been a nightmare. Life here was likely made up of a small community, possibly a large family, or just a few individuals. Being located in central Hyrule, I imagine these inhabitants would have worked common jobs such as farmers, bakers, merchants and so on. A good living. Heading further into central Hyrule for their work, possibly some using the carriage found up here, and then returning to their beautiful home at the end of the day. It's got a cracking view and life here would have been lovely. The sun rise and set in particular, long mornings watching the sun ascend, and late nights watching the moon glow over the hill. They'd also have some local neighbours down on the other side of the hill beside the Dig Dog Suspension Bridge. Not many, but a few people. As for the stable at the bottom of the hill, the potential relationship between those up here and down there really depends on when exactly this settlement fell. But they likely were connected for at least some degree of time, as we do know the stable company was established before the Great Calamity. So unless the outskirts stable wasn't built until later, they would have had some relationship. It's possible some of the stable regulars even lived up here, but that is just speculation. In the modern day, it lies quiet and alone. A cute Korok atop the tree, a now explorable well thanks to Tears of the Kingdom, and in a sort of cruel detail, we can find firefruit growing down here, a wee nod to how the homes above fell. 
In terms of the in-game lore and continuity, I could see this wee settlement being repaired in due time. It's in a fairly good location and has a decent amount of space to work with, so as the Hyrule restoration projects get around the kingdom, the Outskirt Hill Village could see a return. Thanks a ton for watching. What do you think of these ghost towns? Are my speculations and theories correct, or is there something else behind these ruins? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to drop a cheeky wee like, as well as subscribe for more fabulous Zelda content coming your way. If you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, then consider becoming a channel supporter. It is in no way something you should feel pressured to do, but if you'd like to financially support these videos and help make them possible, as well as get some neat goodies in including access to my weekly Inside Scoop post, then check out the supporting links in the description. Keep up to date with me through my socials also linked below, and why not hop in the Discord server to chat to myself and many other Zelda fans. Thanks again for watching, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day or night friends, and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.